Hi, my name is Greg Owen. I am the CEO, founder, and principal broker of Easy Home Store in Central Florida. And for the past four years, I have uh, managed to assist hundreds of people uh, avoid foreclosure uh, by doing something called short sales, which is where the people sell their property and uh, repay less than the full amount of their mortgage. Um, during that time, a lot of people have been asking me about loan modifications and in an effort to try and assist those people um, I've been gathering information and I'd like to share some of that information with you now. Um, along the bottom of the screen you should see a link to a website where you can go to the bottom of the page of that website and download a free book that I've written. Uh, it's called Loan Modification Insider Secrets, How to Get Your Payments Reduced, Keep Your Home and Enjoy Life. In this book, uh, there's a lot of useful information for you if you're planning to do a loan modification, uh, such as uh, how to qualify, for example, uh, things to avoid, uh, telling the bank, uh, various programs that exist out there, how to calculate your loan to value, which is a very important calculation, uh, how to calculate your housing expense ratio, uh, and how the financial worksheet that goes along with that. There's even a section on avoiding scams because uh, on my phone I have a, a Google alert that comes through every day that tells me of uh, pretty much uh, a load of people across the country that are being scammed by either uh, real estate agents, by mortgage brokers, by attorneys even. And, um, and it, it should never be the case that you would pay up front for a loan modification. It should always be free. Uh, there's an example hardship letter and uh, links to where to get all the forms and, and literally everything is there. Um, so the website you can go to, loanaffordability.org. Um, on that website we've also established a, an entitlement calculator so you can put all your details in and find out exactly the programs that you, have, that you qualify for right now. Uh, and we're here to assist you, there's no charge whatsoever. Um, one of the things I would suggest you avoid doing right now is um, I would not talk to the bank at this point, uh, and I know that sounds kind of daft, um, but it's it's very much the same as a uh, as the crack addict going to his dealer and saying, "Is this cocaine bad for me or what?" You know, the bank's going to tell you what's in the bank's best interest. Um, you know, I, w I wouldn't necessarily uh, listen at this point to what they have to say. Take some independent advice from somebody that you trust and that you know. The, um, the purpose of the video here is I want to address the people that have been served with something called a list pendants. And what a list pendants is, uh, we're in Florida, this is a, uh, a, a, a lien theory state. So this is the, the commencement of the judicial process through the county courts. Um, in the event that a list payment has been issued, it means that you've been missing payments. And uh, for the vast majority of people, because Florida has been so desperately affected by the downturn in the economy, um, the vast majority of people have no equity left in their property. And so um, I want to talk to those people uh, right now uh, and I have some good news for you. The good news is that you qualify for a trial loan modification which is a new payment, a reduced payment of somewhere between three and six months. Uh, that's the good news. The bad news is everybody qualifies for a trial loan modification. What the bank is trying to do is get you to reveal all of your information, to play all the cards up front so they know exactly how much money you've got, all the details of your assets and income, and they're still going to foreclose on you. They still intend to foreclose on you. They're gonna hopefully pick up a couple of payments and pass all the information through to the attorneys. And even though they might not continue the foreclosure process immediately because they have so many of these on their books, they are still going to foreclose on you. Um, many of you, I'm sure, will uh, want to go and speak with an attorney. Um, I guess people should never really advise against talking to an attorney, but um, given the fact that you signed a contract to say that you're going to make repayments at a certain amount of time and you haven't done that, um, how on earth are you ever going to win a case against the bank unless the bank has committed some kind of fraud, which is uh, you know, one in a thousand cases that might be true, but uh, for the rest of you, uh, it, you know, the, the attorneys have bills too. They're looking to make money out of you also. They're going to charge you a retainer up front or, as in some cases, and I'm not going to mention any names, but they're on TV here in Florida. Their entire business model is that they will 
for around $400 a month, they'll stall the case as long as they can in the courts. Um, they're still going to lose, but they figure, uh, okay, well, you're not making a mortgage payment and you're not having to pay any rent, so if you give them 400 bucks a month, you're still better off financially. And I get that, I really do. You know, I see from, from your perspective what, what they're trying to do. But you need to understand what's going to happen in the event of a foreclosure. If the banks are successful in getting a foreclosure, they're going to do a number of things. Firstly, you should not assume the banks will simply forget about the money that they've written off. The banks are going to come after you for the full amount of money that you owe. They're not going to forget about it. They have five years in which to file a deficiency notice and they have 20 years to collect on that. So logically, if you're, if you're at the bank now and you're thinking, okay, well, these people owe us a couple of hundred thousand dollars, um, how, could we, um, how could we get that back? Well, is it the best time to go and try and get that back now when you know, the economy's in the pan? Or should we wait 15 years when the things are going back up and people have got a new house perhaps and some equity in it and we can go and garnish their wages? and we can go and seize their assets and we can get a court order to do this. That's what's going to happen. The other thing is that they will um, issue a 1099-A, which is a, an abandonment of debt, to the IRS. Now, the IRS uh, are going to be notified that the money that they've written off is, uh, is a gift and that that gift is a taxable event. And gift tax is what, 30%? So if they write off a couple of hundred thousand dollars and tell the IRS that you owe 30% tax on that, do the math, you know? You have a big problem to address. Um, there's something else I want to talk to you about, which is the distinction and, the, and to ex expel the myth that the, the banks actually lose money in a foreclosure. Um, I understand the logic behind this, but it's, it's been my, I was shocked to learn this, but the banks actually make quite a lot of money out of a foreclosure. You need to understand the difference between a loan servicer and an investor. What the banks do here when they lend money to people often is that they lend the money and then they sell the debt, the loan, to a third party investor. But they retain servicing rights, which is to say that they are responsible for collecting the payments from you each month and if you stop making payments, they'll take you to court and foreclose on you. Um, they charge the investor uh, servicing fees for the gathering of this, uh, uh, these payments and, and to process them all. And, uh, and very often these things are sliced and diced and put on the stock market and sold as mortgage-backed securities. And so the investor is somebody that's very difficult to track down. Uh, you know, they can be spread throughout the world, uh, various large organizations and such. Um, but in the event of a foreclosure, the, the bank take all of their servicing fees right off the top after the property is relisted and resold, okay? So they don't actually lose any money at all. They're making money, and in fact, it's in the bank's interest often, if you're not making payments, it's in the bank's interest to foreclose on you. I know that sounds kind of scary. So what is the goal here? From your perspective, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to get your life back on track? Do you want to put all this behind you? Because there are um, various government programs designed to do it, but some of those have failed drastically. I mean, the first HAMP program was just an unmitigating failure completely. The only way at the moment to get your life back on track is through a short sale. And you're going to go and do a deal with the bank. The bank, in return for your cooperation in doing a short sale, are going to write off the deficiency. And if they don't write off the deficiency, I'm not going to suggest that you sign the paperwork and complete the sale. But they're going to walk away from you. It's like a get out of jail free card. You don't have to pay anything for a short sale. The banks pay us as real estate agents to sell a short sale on your behalf. Um, and so you can put all this behind you, you can get this monkey off the back, you can get on with your life. Um, my name is Greg Owen and I'm the principal broker with Easy Home Store and I'd be glad to review your file. Thank you very much.